Item ID. AEP-006. Enclosure designation. Oriens. Threat classification. DIM-02. Adaptive enclosure protocols. AEP-006 requires a constant 5 megawatt charge to maintain contact with AEP-006-1. AEP-006 can be maintained indefinitely without this charge, but at the cost of contact with AEP-006-1. AEP-006 is enclosed in a 15.5 square meter room at Site 628, located near Germany. Members of AEP-006-1 are scheduled to make contact at approximately 700 GMT plus 2 to 1200 GMT plus 2 bi-weekly, every two weeks. Technological and cultural exchanges are permitted after proper filing and documentation. AEP-006-1 security personnel and site personnel are to cooperate in the security of both Site-628 and AEP-006-1's Site-782. During communication with any individual from AEP-006-1, the falsehood of a German victory in World War II in this reality must be upheld. All maintenance equipment for AEP-006 must be in an adjacent room to protect against possible malfunction. Description. AEP-006 is a circular dimensional anomaly approximately 3 meters in diameter that resembles theoretical wormholes. AEP-006 provides access to an adjacent reality where the now defunct German Reich, further designated as AEP-006-1, managed to be victorious in World War II. AEP-006-1 was confirmed to achieve advanced technological progress. The current year within AEP-006-1s was discovered to be 2000 during initial communication. Upon initial enclosure, AEP-006 appeared within Site-628, seemingly intentionally in an area large enough for containment. After enclosure, multiple communications messages were intercepted, being confirmed to be various phone calls, songs, and radio frequencies. Multiple expeditions were undertaken with teams of five O-class personnel, each to examine the reality AEP-006 connected to. All expeditions ended in success with no losses. First contact with AEP-006-1 was established on 2000, when multiple armed personnel from AEP-006-1 entered the enclosure via AEP-006. The following log contains initial contact established by Dr. Show AEP-006-1 initial communication log. Log begin. Doctor. All right, gentlemen. Same procedure as before. Multiple armed personnel will accompany you as... Doctor. And other personnel are interrupted by the sound of multiple armed personnel emerging from AEP-006. An individual wearing an officer uniform resembling that of a Wehrmacht officer is seen emerging after the others. The unidentified officer is seen pulling out an English translation book and giving an audible cough. Officer. On behalf of the Führer and the Third Reich, I greet you all. We have, um, noticed your recent incursions into our territory, and we wish to establish a peaceful and Reconciling communication with whomever you may align towards. Doctor. Well, um, we thank you for your peaceful introduction. I wish we had better circumstances for this meeting, as we weren't expecting any visitation today. The officer chuckles as unarmed personnel emerge from AEP-006. The unarmed personnel holding what seems to be radiation equipment and testing the area before leaving. Officer. I assure you, we are very understanding to your, um, predicament. Yes, predicament. We already have personnel on the other end of our little portal here, constructing a site for us to maintain further contact. Now, while our appearance is quite sudden and shocking, we will have you know that this is simply just for you to know we mean no harm. Doctor and officer. Approach and converse privately for five minutes. O-class personnel are escorted out by security as doctor and the officer shake hands. Doctor. I assume you're going to have better appointed meetings in the future? Officer. Of course. 
Look at this as both of us planting the seeds for future cooperation between our organizations. Log end. Following successful contact, the individuals from AEP 006 1 return via AEP 006. Communications are established via radio shortly after. Following initial contact, AEP 006 1's administration has been highly cooperative with the association. Allowing the exchange of personnel and information between Site 682 and Site 782. Addendum 1A. AEP 006 1 personnel notified Site 682 personnel on 2000 that the Fuhrer, further designated as AEP 006 2, is to communicate with Site 682's director. Multiple security personnel from AEP 006 1 were dispatched days before communication was planned. On 2000, AEP 006 2 made contact with Site 682's director. AEP 006 2 refused to document the event, but allowed notes to be taken of the meeting. Show AEP 006 2 post meeting log. Log begin. Upon meeting AEP 006 2, I noticed a striking resemblance to. um. Adolf Hitler. Appearance, voice, height, all seemed to fit the profile for him. Which was the oddest part of the whole meeting. After asking AEP 006 2 of their origin, they explained that they were indeed a clone of sorts of the long dead Fuhrer. Director pauses to take a drink of water. Although AEP 006 2 did more or less confirm cloning to be their origin, they did not explicitly state it. It appears that AEP 006 2 has the memories of the former Adolf Hitler and assumed the identity of him. Besides the oddity of the initial meeting, we managed to get information regarding AEP 006 2's reality. Director, proceed to open a folder containing further notes. Upon further interview, AEP 006 2 confirmed that the moon landing picture was indeed real and was taken during the first moon landing on 1950, detailing immense technological progression following German victory in World War II. AEP 006 2 seemed prideful of technological progress achieved by AEP 006 2 and went further to detail of colonial settlements on the planets of Mars and Venus in the year of 1980. Unfortunately, AEP 006 2 refused to answer further questions regarding the technological advancements of AEP 006 1. Short pause as Dr. Hans, Director. Further documentation. Director. The final questions comprised of the state of AEP 006 1 and the world in its reality. AEP 006 8 confirmed that the world was mostly subjugated by German forces following World War II, going so far as the United States and multiple nations in the Americas, Asia, and Europe to be client states of the Reich. After this was confirmed, AEP 006 2 thanked us for the opportunity to ask questions and announced their departure. No further meetings have been scheduled as of recent. Log end. Further cooperative actions have been approved by AEP 006 1 following the meeting between AEP 006 2 and Site 682 Director. Cultural and technological exchange is now approved to take place yearly between Site 782 and Site 628. Further guard detail from AEP 006 1 has been added. Addendum 2A. During a routine O class exchange with AEP 006 1, O 6897 attempted to flee and defect to AEP 006 1. No further events have been recorded with O class personnel fleeing. AEP 006 1 personnel have remained silent about the status of O 6897. Addendum 2. AEP 006 1 personnel have released information regarding O 006 1, detailing that once apprehended, O 6789 was found to have partial Ashkenazi heritage. Documents show that O 6789 was terminated by AEP 006 1 personnel 
following the capture of 06897. Following the release of information, Site 782 submitted a request to Site 628 for all O-class exchanged to be of Ashkenazi, Sephardi, Israeli, and various African ancestries. The request was partially granted on the condition that non-specified subjects would make up two of five exchanged O-class personnel.